Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're gonna cover some more getting started and understanding about axes. So let's go ahead, jump straight into spad.next and explain a little bit better. So we're gonna go to controls and we're gonna grab a control. One of the things about assigning a standard axis, unfortunately with Microsoft Flight Sim, these ones that they're that we're using here for throttle with reverser and throttle without reverser and just reverser unfortunately those don't use the new dash ex1 or extended that you're going to find a lot of the planes in microsoft flight sim use now some planes even a lot of the defaults will actually support any of those axes however things like the crj the fly-by-wire and some others they may not react properly using these uh, previous axes. So when we look at this axis and we turn it, you'll notice it sees the zero through 255. And that's because that's the actual raw value because this axis is only eight bits. So it only has 255 steps. Now, when we map it here, it's gonna automatically scale this across the full thrust range. So if I was to pull back a little bit and set this, it, it is going to interpret this event and actually scale it across the full axes for you anyway. So then I would come down and I'd say, well, this is about my point where I would want idle. I'd press for idle. And then we'd come down like this and that's now your reverse thrust be scaling this for you when it's sent into the sim and handling all that behind the scenes for you uh, and of course if for some reason the way the axis was moving to begin with uh, you could flip it and invert it more often than not though unfortunately what we're going to need to do is now use a custom axis. and so here with the custom axis we have a lot more information. Now let's just start out with nothing being done. And here's your axis moving. But what you can see is it shows you that 16383 to minus 16383, which is actually the entire range of what uh, Flight Sim axis, whether it was P3D, FSX, Microsoft Flight Sim, all these axes actually register in this range from minus 16383. And so here, this is what we were talking about when we said SPAD will recalibrate into that range for you. We're gonna go to add data. We've got our data example. There we go, data example. So now, as we move that, of course, nothing is happening to data example because we haven't told it which data it's getting it from. If we literally put a hard-coded value in here, you're gonna see that it goes to 50. That's the only value it's gonna send. For this to work, I still have to tell it what is it supposed to be using. So if we tell it to use the axi value, then what's going to happen here is it's going to send that value range out and into that data value. And so there we go, scaled away, life is great. And here you see it going between that value. Now if we change it to a raw value, 0 to 255. So now we're seeing that data value. So let's accept that. And now it goes from zero to 255. It's not generating that axis range. Now you can also invert it. So if we invert it, well, now we've got those values, but it's just inverting the direction. So now when I went full up, it's actually zero, full down is actually 255. But what you have to understand is whether or not axi value is selected or not right now, raw value is still what's on top. Even though that's showing you 255, 
it still doesn't know to get the the axi value. It's still going to use the value to set. So just keep in mind, you do check both boxes. So you still turn on axi, but you'd be toggling between raw value or axi value. You can also rescale it. Say you had a value that needs to go from zero to 16,383. That still is going to say 255. Now you see that it scales all the way up to that value that we rescaled. So you still need to use raw in this case because otherwise it's not going to do anything. So here I need raw and now I get that rescaled value. The purpose of the range definition allows you to set up a range to then map a rescale. Now I've shown this in other videos where we've set up multiple ranges. So I suggest you look at, for example, um, the TCA throttles. But if we think about it really quickly, it's like from here, zero, and I would hit set, up to 200, I need to rescale this from zero to say, 1250 or 12500 that might be the range on the axi that is the range of the throttle in the manual before you hit a climb detent so we go ahead and we would be creating one of those and now you'll see that part at the top it does not go beyond that 12500 and they have these intentional gaps. So now you would add another event, another custom axi to the same control, except what we're able to do here, and actually the easiest thing to do is take that one, copy it, paste it, so that we can modify it. What's cool is you can also type this in. So maybe we're gonna go from 220 to 230, and that would be where the detent is, 14,000, and we just stay with 14,000. Now, it's going to spit the, it out a bunch of times, but who cares? Now, you could have just sent at this range a one-time value to set, and that would work as well. I do this so it's consistent. See that? As soon as we got down into that range, it jumped to 14 but it's not going to start again. So you have that extra little leeway on the axis between max like uh, manual, but before it actually clicks into the detent. So now for the final one, what we would do is a similar thing. We're gonna copy this, copy this event, paste it. And then this would be like setting like max or toga detent. Well. I can now just go 250 to 255 and now we've got our 16383, 16383. Now you've got those ranges where you've got extra play. So you don't have to worry about it jumping and skipping and you've now created your own detents and ranges. Well guys, I hope this was clear. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.